Welcome back to Let's Play Canon. Standard Edition for the PC. In the last episode, we celebrated that she has got a dress. And that is all. Also, we'll be going to the ball as well. As if that wasn't obvious, like. Then except in the chopsticks I offer, she finally begins to eat. Unfortunately, it's quite obvious that that's what they were waiting for. For her to lower her guard for an instant. At once there comes that dry, now familiar sound. Mai sticks the chopsticks into the rice and reaches for her sword. Clang! Her hands close it. No, wait. Her hand closes on thin air. With a shrill metallic sound, a sword falls and slides away from her down the corridor, unnaturally fast. I stand dumbfounded, dumbfounded, unable to think how to respond. The air moves around us, pressing in. My drops into a defensive pose, wielding her pair of natto smeared chopsticks. I can scarcely believe it, but she appears to consider this suitable armament. My blur slicing the air. The dual wielded chopsticks leap from her hands and she shifts into a roll down the corridor. But she overshoots her sword. Wait, so what's she fighting with? Is she using her sword or the chopsticks? I don't know. This is no careless attack, but one cunningly planned. Unless Mai gains the upper hand soon, we may be forced to retreat. I struggle to make sense of the situation. Mai and her sword have swapped positions, with the enemy still keeping them apart. And that means the sword's slide has also reversed its direction and it's coming back this way. There must be something I can do! Ditch the food and grab the sword! I drop the bowl of natto rice and break into a run. Not towards the stairs, though. I skid up to the... Fell sword? Then you mean fallen sword and scoop it up. And my body is lifted from the ground. I manage for a moment to believe that I'm being carried forward by an excess of momentum. But that doesn't be doesn't last. There's no way a mere momentum could have carried me several dozen meters without touching the ground. Sounds like fun until you actually hit something anyway. No. They're unleashed their power. Luckily, they didn't hurl me into the wall. Oh, so it must have been fun then. I might have been seriously hurt. Sure, whatever you say. The world spinning around me begins to slow. I pick myself up unsteadily, balance myself with my arms. Hoping my feet won't slip. No, hoping my feet won't slip again. Mai is racing toward me, jabbing one finger at the ceiling. Uns understanding at once what the signal means, I... Uh, hurl the sword in that direction. An underarm swing and I let go of the hilt. The sword screams up like a javelin, straight and true. Crunch! The point pierces the ceiling tiles that at once a hand grasps the hilt. The weight of a body draws it out again. My, a sharp swish and she's landed, crouching to absorb the impact, slicing the sword down in a vertical arc. Clang! Now a horizontal backhand swing. Zip! Back comes her shoulder, then it's forward again in a vicious thrust. Swish! She swings again, but this time the blade finds only dead air. Got away again? Is that good? I guess I don't know whether or not that's effective. Still, that was a pretty good bit of teamwork, don't you think? I'm on a bit of a high now, having actually contributed to the battle for once. I feel a bit closer to the girl I've been watching in action all these nights. And looking at mine now, at her apparent good mood, I can scarcely believe my own eyes. Her face shines as though enveloped in a veil of light. 
This mysterious aura she bears now somehow reminds me of our first meeting. Yeah, then too the air was filled with an otherworldly perfume. Wait, though this smell isn't otherworldly. Positively domestic. I try moving my nose closer to my head. The smell. Yuck, you're covered in natto! Totally killed the moment, like. Now I see it clearly. Threads of natto encircle her head, gleaming as the moonlight catches them. Oh no, you're close, too! I wipe her head with my sleeve, but the wiping quickly turns to scrubbing. I bet he's probably thinking in his mind, I hope that some of it got on her general boob area, and so at least that has an excuse. He wouldn't be able to get away with it though, I imagine. That's okay, I, I'm in casual clothes, but you have to wear that tomorrow, don't you? It's that sort of attitude that's stopping people from liking you, you know? How is that so, anyway? Need to take better care of yourself. Too... too predictable. It always ends up this way, whenever I come close to being immersed in that fantasy world. So this time the vision that nearly enchanted me turned out to be my, covered with natto. I don't think I can do better than that. You can't get the smell out just by rubbing. Well, you should! I take my body between my arms, hold my nose at shoulder height, and sniff. Wait, what? She smells of my, of freshly washed clothes. Well, I guess you'll get away with that. But you won't get away with touching her! <laughs> Off goes the peanuts! I release her. She says no more, but turns and returns. Wait. Turns and returns to her post. There she picks up the chopsticks and bowl of natto rice and, showing little regard for hygiene, begins to stir. I have no doubt that should the enemy return, she will once again end up soaked with the stuff. I think I might just avoid getting natto again. By and by, I leave the school and head for home. The hour is late, and the streets through which I... Wait, no. The streets through which I hurry are empty. No sooner am I home than I leap into the bath to warm my frozen body. It was then that I realized he no longer had a penis. Exhausted by the events of the day, I head straight for bed and collapse, closing my eyes. Wednesday, January 20th. A pleasant awakening. It turns out that his penis has just regrown in the night, I guess. Realizing that it's the day of the event, I have no difficulty getting up. No, maybe that isn't quite the right way to put it. It's more that I was so excited that I barely slept anyway. Am I really still that much of a kid? After breakfast, I head for a mirror, knowing that my hair must be a mess. I was fiddling with it through breakfast to uh, calm down, as Naoki was finding my excitement suspicious. And well, the ball is today, and I'd like to go looking good if it's at all possible. Oh, optimism, I'm not normally given to reading, and I don't even know the basics of styling. So, after much cursing and wasted effort, I end up going and looking as scruffy as usual. What do you mean by cursing, exactly? What's that all about? Is he just like, as he's walking out the door, he's like, uh, fuck it. Let's go. See you next time, viewers, on Let's Play Canon Standard Edition for the PC.